Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here for Assimilate Inc. and I'm back again with another Learn Scratch tutorial. And in this lesson, we're going to continue our discussion of the edit module by moving along and talking about the timeline submenu specifically and how we can now start to speed up our workflow when it comes to adjusting clips or more specifically slots in our timeline. Now, before we get rolling, I just want to throw out a couple little quick tidbits for you to keep in the back of your head when you are working. A great quick shortcut to jump back and forth to the start of any slot in your timeline is to simply press Command or Control on the keyboard, use the left and right arrow keys to simply jump back and forth. Very quick and very simple. Now, another great visual cue that you may not have noticed is that you'll notice that if I take the cursor and I hover over one of the shots in our timeline or one of the containers in our timeline, you'll notice that we have in this case a straight line and two straight lines down here at the end. Well, what that is telling me is that right now I can adjust the container within its space in the timeline. But if I was to navigate over here and I was to turn on the reveal previous and reveal next shots, you'll now see that if I hover over, I now get a little triangular bracket at the start and at the end telling me that I can now adjust the previous shot and the next shot. All right, and to take that one step further, if I turn ripple on, you'll now see that I get two triangular brackets down at the end of this slot. So just a little bit of a visual cue. If you happen to be in one of the other little sub modules here, you'll see those always appear. So you'll exactly know what you're able to do with any given slot in your timeline. Now, speaking of any given slot in your timeline, what I want to do here is I just want to take this. I'm not going to ripple it here. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to, let's just turn our outgoing or our next shot on. I'm just going to space this down a little bit because it's something I mentioned in the last lesson. I want to make sure I point it out right here off the top. We talked about the fact that if we take the slot and we extend it down, what's going to happen with our shot is that once it gets to the end, it's basically going to sit there and not do anything. So the question is, how do we change that if we want to? Well, obviously we could take the shot, we could slow it down, we could do whatever we want to do, you know, if that's actually what we wanted the shot to do, or Inside of our timeline submenu, we have the ability under the properties, it's a little bit tucked away and if you're not looking for it, you won't be able to find it. Right here, I can drop this down and choose what do I want it to do. Now by default, it's set to play once and then it's going to again sit there and freeze. Well, we obviously have the choice to loop, bounce, reverse, reverse loop or reverse bounce. If I set it into bounce, you'll see that as we come down here and I hit play, it's going to play and then it's going to play in reverse. Now, to be honest, I find just the play once to be a little bit more in my face. So this way, as soon as it freezes, I know the shot is not long enough and it is now not going to play anymore. Now, with that being said, what we also have the ability to do in here is to enable and disable clips. Now, this is actually a very clever thing. And it's not quite what you would think. In other applications, what happens when you enable and disable a shot and you go back and you hit play on the timeline is that the timeline will play and you'll get to the shot and it will just disappear. Black will play or you'll be saying, oh, hold on, let me jump down. Let me, you know, do whatever, you know, to get the next shot to play. It doesn't quite work like that inside of Scratch. What's going to happen is that once we disable a clip, you'll notice that I can still drag through it. It still appears in my timeline, but there's a red bar underneath it. What's now going to happen is when I come back and I hit play is that once it gets to this shot, it's actually just going to skip right over it and go to the next shot. So this is fantastic if you're, you know, viewing dailies and maybe there was one problematic shot that you, you know, have to get in and do some work on before you want to show it to anybody. This is how you can show everybody what's in your timeline minus a specific shot or a few shots that you've chosen to disable. Now, one last thing that I do want to mention about disabling slots before we move on is that not only is your shot going to be excluded or skipped during playback, but it's also going to be skipped from rendering. So before you render your timeline, make sure that no slots have been disabled, unless of course you want them to be disabled so that everything renders out as expected. Now, I'm just going to re-enable it for right now because we want to keep everything enabled in our timeline. And let's move over to the left and talk about the slot parameters. All right. 
Now, I'm actually going to start with fit. Now, the reason I'm going to start with fit is because I took this shot and I extended it down or the, extended the slot down so that it's actually too long for the clip that's contained within it. And what I want to do is just say, no, 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 scratch. What I want you to do is to fit this slot to the length of the actual clip. So all I have to do is with the shot selected, I'm simply going to say fit and boom, you'll now see that that slot has now been shrunk down to fit the exact length of the media that is contained within it. All right. Now, we also have the ability to insert slots. Now, what's important to keep in mind about this is I like to refer to this as an add edit because basically that's what we're doing. By inserting a slot, what's going to happen here is if I say insert slot and I come back and I hit play, it's not going to look like anything has actually happened. However, you'll see that if I now come back to the construct module, we actually have two slots that represent that one clip. All right, and you'll notice here that it's a little bit of a different duration based on the slot that we're looking at. Now, obviously, we're doing this based on the assumption that we're going to put another clip in here. So we could now simply navigate back to video. We could come into replace, take a clip, drop it in and replace it in the slot that's currently there or whatever else we need to do. Now, of course, keep in mind that on the flip side of that, if I didn't want to have this here, what we always have the ability to do is to simply delete any slot right from the timeline view itself. And of course, the shortcut on the keyboard to do that is simply by hitting delete. So you don't always need to be going back to the menus to do things. Remember, hit that H key on the keyboard to call up your shortcuts so that you'll know exactly the shortcut you need, especially when working with those edit modes to get functionality out of them right away. All right, now we've been doing a lot of interacting with the interface, but here's where we can now start to speed things up with trim left and trim right. All right, now the keyboard shortcuts are the left and right square bracket. So for example, if I wanted this slot to start right here, instead of me getting in and dragging, all I have to do is hit the left square bracket, boom. Now we're starting this slot exactly where we had the cursor parked in the timeline. Same thing with the end. If I want it to end right here, all I need to do is simply hit that right square bracket and boom. This is how we can now jump through the timeline, especially if you know, you're know you in a situation where there's just you know a ton of extraneous you know rolling before they actually get in and use the slate marker or anything like that this is how you can quickly just zing through the timeline you're simply using the trim left and trim right commands to get those shots the exact duration that you need them to be now let's move on let's talk about tracks because up until this point we've pretty much been dealing with a single video track but we do have the ability to add additional tracks now you did see in the previous lesson when I turned on our enable disable drag feature, I could take clips and move them to a second video track. What we can also do here, I'm just going to pull things north a little bit. We'll just space everything back or scale it down a little bit just so that everything fits properly again, is we can come in and simply add tracks right from here as well. We can then also simply navigate over to the import command. I'm just going to come to my bookmarks. We'll grab some footage here. Doesn't again matter which one we're going to grab. Let's just grab a different one here. Sure, Mr. Deer. We'll just grab Mr. Deer. Could be Miss Deer for all I know. And I'm just going to drop it into my timeline. Again, we can lock tracks. We can disable tracks, delete tracks. But what we can also do right from here that we talked about in a previous lesson is get in and analyze as well. This is how you can take a piece that's already been edited, break it down to the sum of its parts, and then have them in slots for you to do a grade or whatever it is that you need to do. What you can also do here, and I'm just going to import another shot here. Uh, sure, why don't we go with this cool waterfall? I'll just say open. We'll just put that up on video track three. Is that anytime you can grab one of the video tracks and simply reposition them in the stacking hierarchy here to switch where they're going to appear. Now, obviously, that will change our edit but you just have that flexibility as well. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to delete this track, put things back the way that we had them before and delete this track, because here's another common one, and we'll wrap up with this one here, okay? Common thing, you might want to add black off the top, you might want to add color bars, whatever you want to do, 
So what we're going to do here is we're going to head back to video. I'm going to make sure that my insert is turned on and we're going to, in our timeline, navigate right over here to where it says filler. I'm going to drop that down and I'm going to just grab, let's grab color bar 75%, just something that actually is going to stand out pretty well. Now, if you take a look, because we have insert turned on, we are snapping in between the edit points. And what I could do now is simply come right back here to the beginning, click right there, and if I drag now all the way back, you'll see that there is my one frame of bars. Okay, not quite what we want. I'd probably rather it be five seconds or 10 seconds or however much bars I might need. So what we're going to do is head back to the video sub menu. And what I'm now going to do is I'm gonna jump back to that very first frame. Now you'll see that we have our sources in and out and the records in and out. Now, let me show you something very interesting here. And again, this all comes back to edit modes. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the duration of the source. To do that, I'm simply just gonna click, we'll punch in a value of about five seconds, and I'm gonna say enter. Now, if you take a look down here at the bottom of the clip, we'll say the clip, the second clip, you can see the length of the slot that I just adjusted. Its source is five seconds long but its record duration is only one frame. Now you're also gonna notice that if I start trying to click on that to make an adjustment to it, I can't, it's grayed out, I can't click anything. Now why is that? Well, it directly comes back to the edit modes. If I come down here and only turn the edit modes on and not ripple, and I come down here and I make a duration change of five seconds, do you wanna know what's gonna happen? That slot is going to become five seconds, but at the cost of the first shot in the timeline. So if I undo that, and I now come up and I turn ripple on, and I now come back here and I make this shot five seconds long, and I say go, it's now going to take everything and push it down my timeline five seconds, now without overriding the start of the next slot. So keep in mind, now I could add the bars, I could add black, if I needed to add a slate or something like that, we could add all that in here very quickly by simply dropping those in, adjusting their length, making sure the edit mode that we want is set correctly, and we'll be all set to go. All right, I wanna thank you for watching this great lesson on learning Assimilate Scratch. Now, don't forget to check us out on our different social channels, and if you missed our last lesson, you can simply click on it right here on the screen in front of you. Don't forget as well to hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions, you can always send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com.